Hello, Photogs. We are in the studio this week and we are talking watermarking, specifically how to use them efficiently with presets. Uh, but before we get into that, what are your thoughts on watermarking? Do you use them? Do you not? Uh, leave your comments below. Let's start a discussion on this. I'd really like to know and get some feedback of uh, other Photogs uh, thoughts and views on, on their experiences using them. You know, we know they can easily be removed if somebody really wanted to steal our photos. Uh, I personally think it's still better to use them than not, but maybe find that fine balance where they're not blaring or screaming. Anyway, leave your comments below. Let's start a discussion. Um, I'd love to get some feedback on, on your experiences and, uh, and, and go from there. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so we are in the library tab. And down here in the lower left, you see an export button. If we click that, that brings up our export dialog box. But I'm going to close that out because I never use that button. I am always in the develop tab when I export. And if I go back down to that button, it is now a paste command. So that's not going to work out. So if I right click on the screen, uh, a menu comes up and I can go down from here into the export and all my presets or my export options are right here. You can also access the export from the file menu, go down to export, and lastly, the hotkey shift command E, which is what I use, and I use that right now. So shift command E brings up that same box. All right, so we have a bunch of user presets here. My favorite, and the one we'll use today, is my Amazon Drive for sharing. So I, I created this preset so that when I use it, it exports my image and then automatically uploads it to my Amazon Cloud Drive. Um, if you have an Amazon Prime account, I don't know if you knew this or not, but you have unlimited photo storage. That includes RAW and TIFFs as well. Can't beat it. Um, in fact, I made it uh, a separate video on creating these user presets and I'll leave a link up here and you can check that out. All right, so let's move on to the watermarking and we're going to start with a simple copyright watermark. So we'll click that. Now we have to click it again to go deeper. Edit watermarks will go bring us deeper into the watermark editor. And basically what you're seeing here is just a simple text watermark. And by the way, this is going to, going to be your um, your Lightroom uh, identity plate. So whatever when you set up Lightroom, whatever you used for your name, um, like when we use that for your watermark, for your simple text watermark anyway. You can go over here and you can adjust your font, whatever style you want. And you can go ahead and make any adjustments to the style. This font doesn't have any styles, but I know Arial should, right? That's a standard font, right? So if you wanna go bold, if you wanna go italic, you wanna change the color, there's a drop shadow on there now, we can turn that off or we can make adjustments to make that pop a little bit more. The settings you're going to be using the most are right under the watermark effects. You know, your opacity is going to be pretty important. All right, you may not want your watermark just jumping out and taking too much attention away from the image. So uh, you'll be using this a lot. Um, your size, you'll be using that as well. And obviously that's too big, but you will also be using your inset because if you default these back, you can see that <laughs> your watermark is basically just really just hugging the uh, the corner of the frame here. So you can adjust your your offset. I mean your inset with the horizontal and the vertical adjustments. And then of course, if you want to move your watermark around, you can just go ahead and anchor it to any portion of the frame here. All right, let's talk about the graphical portions of watermarking. Instead of using simple text, you have a logo you made or logo you designed or had designed and uh, you want to use that. So shift command E brings up our export box as we did before. And from here, we're going to go ahead and choose edit watermarks. This will go ahead and bring up our preview or watermark editor. And you can see I have my graphic here. So these are some um, 
some of my logos that I have. And by the way, um, if you're designing your own logo in Photoshop, for example, I highly, highly recommend that you export it as a PNG uh, rather than a JPEG. The PNG with the alpha channel gives you transparency. As you can see, there's no background around this. By the way, if you like this image, uh, I made a video um, down at the coastline here in Connecticut, the process of making this image and composing with foreground elements. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave a link up here if you wanna watch that video. So basically these same principles apply whether you're using text or you're using a graphic. And the thing here is that if you're creating presets up here, anytime you make an adjustment of the preset, you get this edited up here because you've, you've essentially changed the preset. And what you find is that down here, this button now says save because if I click it, it wants you to create a new preset. Now, I don't want to create a new preset because I like this preset, my white high-resolution high shadow. I don't want a new preset of this particular preset every time I import. I mean, that'd be nuts. You'll have literally hundreds, thousands of presets in here. So what do you do? You make your changes to the image. Then you come down and you hit the update preset. And when I hit this button, watch what happens to the save down here. Now you see that change to done. So Lightroom was saying, oh, okay, so you took the preset you already had, you updated that rather than saving a copy of it. Now I'll let you proceed to go ahead and, and export it. You hit done, you hit export, and you're all set. But again, you make your changes, you get your, your watermark the way you want it. Maybe I want a little smaller, maybe I want a little less opacity, whatever you want. Back up here, update. It's now saved and you can proceed, which is a beautiful thing. All right, let's get into the good stuff now. Let's go ahead and create a new watermark preset. Shift Command E brings up our export box. We're gonna go down here to watermarking and edit watermarks. From here, we are gonna go ahead and choose the new watermark you've had designed, you've created, whatever it is. Better off to be a PNG. If you're having it designed, by the way, from a graphics designer, they're gonna automatically make it a PNG. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this guy here, bring it in, and you can see that updated, right? Let's put that up top here, put a little more opacity so we can see it. Maybe a little bit bigger, just for now. Ooh, not that big. <laughs> just for examples here. I would not do that normally. Now, it's interesting to see that our uh, existing preset, the, uh, the white high resolution shadow is now edited. I have to be very careful here because if I'd gone down now and had, had chosen to update preset, as I said previously, this would blow out the old uh, graphic I had for this preset. Instead, because we're creating a new preset, we want to go ahead and save current settings as new preset. Now we can go ahead and say, you know, whatever we want to call this thing. Um, round tree logo, all right? Huh. We can come up with something better than that, but for the sake of this, we'll just go ahead and create this. So now we can see we have the round tree logo. We've just created a new preset. And that shows up in my preset list here. You can see my white shadow, if I choose that, has not changed. That's still, let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. That's still the same thing it's been. Of course, I just made a change. So now it's saying it's edited, so I'll go ahead and say update that. And that's all set, but let's go back to the one we just created, our round tree logo. And you can see that's the same as well. And the same principles apply. Let's say we anchor this in the lower right-hand corner. We go ahead and uh, remove some opacity here. We bring the size down. Again, we can see that it's asking us to save a new preset, but we don't want to do that because we just created this and we don't need a copy of it. Instead, to remove the edited, we go up and we say update this, this, this preset here, and voila, it's good to go. We can now proceed and we can go ahead and export our image and we're good to go. All right, that wraps it up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe and have an awesome day. Get out there and shoot.